Have you ever wondered why there can't be a tunnel connecting Japan and South Korea? Why a high-speed train from Seoul can't go straight to Tokyo? Just imagine a travel with no flights, no airports. Just a seamless journey across a massive undersea tunnel stretching over 200 plus kilometers connecting South Korea and Japan. Sounds like something out of science fiction, right? But is it really impossible? Or could we actually build this engineering marvel in the future? Make sure to watch till the end because the answers to these questions are truly jaw-dropping. Today, we're diving deep into the facts, history, and future possibilities of one of the most ambitious infrastructure ideas ever imagined. Let's start by know how this tunnel idea has just evolved over the past years. Believe it or not, the idea of physically connecting Japan to the rest of Asia isn't new. Back in the early 20th century, there were whispers of a bridge linking Korea and Japan. Some plans even proposed underwater tunnels. But due to war, political tensions, and massive technological challenges, these ideas never became reality. Back in the early 1900s, people started whispering about a bridge connecting Korea and Japan. Then, in the 1980s, Japan actually thought about building a tunnel from Fukuoka to Busan. And guess what? They even did feasibility studies. But why did it never happen? Politics, cost, and, let's be honest, the massive technological challenges. But what about today? Could modern engineering finally make this happen? Before I reveal the secrets, I want to subscribe to our channel as it helps our channel grow. Believe it or not, this isn't just some wild fantasy. This is a real proposal that has been on the table more than once. The idea? To build an undersea tunnel over 128 kilometers long, connecting Japan to South Korea. Such a project would connect two of Asia's largest economies and dramatically reshape regional transportation, trade, and tourism. But there's a catch. The area is notorious for its seismic instability, and the political waters between Japan and South Korea are just as treacherous, clouded by historical grievances and modern-day rivalries. Let's see how this project was even proposed in the past. And in terms of engineering reality, is it even possible? The first hurdle we have is the distance. The shortest possible route between South Korea and Japan is about 128 miles, 206 kilometers, across the Korea Strait. That's almost double the length of the Channel Tunnel connecting the UK and France. Now, we have two options. A bridge? This would require a mind-blowing amount of steel and concrete, strong enough to withstand typhoons, earthquakes, and massive ocean currents. Think a chain of artificial islands supporting a 200-kilometer superbridge. Insane, right? An underwater tunnel, the world's longest underwater tunnel, the Seiken Tunnel in Japan, is only 33 miles, 53 kilometers long. A Korea-Japan tunnel would have to be at least four times longer. Could we really build something like that? Here's the kicker. This area, the Korea Strait, is one of the most seismically unstable regions in the world. Earthquakes, tsunamis, underwater volcanoes. You name it, this stretch of sea has it. Not to mention the political drama between Japan and South Korea, which makes this project, well, complicated. Let's just say it's a tightrope walk of engineering and diplomacy. Back in the 1940s, Japan was already starting to plan the tunnel. They had surveys done, designs ready, but then came World War II and the project disappeared. Fast forward to the 1980s when economic growth made the idea seem more realistic. The Korea-Japan Friendship Tunnel was born with plans for high-speed rail and connecting both countries in a way never seen before. But again, politics. So we can say technically yes, but financially, brace yourself. Today, and the idea is still alive. But let's talk about the real challenge here, the cost. We're talking an eye-watering $170 billion to pull this off. And that's just the starting point. Yeah, no big deal, right? A few billion dollars here, a few billion dollars there. But is it even possible? Technically, yes. Let's break it down. The Korea Strait is 227 meters deep at its deepest point. The longest tunnel today, the Seiken Tunnel in Japan, is just 53 kilometers long. We're talking about a tunnel nearly four times longer than that. Could we really build a tunnel that long under the ocean? Well, yes. With enough investment, cutting edge technology, and a lot of time, it could be done. But there's still the environmental impact. This is the Korea Strait, 
home to delicate marine ecosystems, the project could wreck underwater life. Are we willing to risk that for the sake of fast travel? But the question is, what's stopping this from happening? Even if engineers found a way to make this work, there's one problem bigger than earthquakes or ocean currents. Politics. South Korea and Japan have a complicated history, and major projects like this require huge trust and cooperation. Economic benefits could be enormous, but would both nations be willing to invest that much? For now, there are no official plans to move forward. But if relations improve and technology advances, this project could become one of the greatest engineering feats in human history. So, could a bridge or tunnel really connect Seoul and Tokyo? Theoretically, yes. Will we see it in our lifetime? That depends on innovation, investment, and most importantly, politics. Now for the real hurdles, costs, safety, and construction. We've explored the bold ambitions and visionary aspects of the tunnel under the Korea Strait, but no mega project comes without its challenges. Now let's take a closer look at the potential hurdles, the staggering cost, and whether this project is worth the risk. Building a tunnel beneath the Korea Strait is no simple task. It's not just about digging a hole through the earth, it's about overcoming geological challenges, ensuring the safety of workers, managing construction delays, and minimizing the environmental impact. The Korea Strait is not a calm, predictable environment. The seabed is made up of rock formations, sedimentary layers, and fault lines, making it a highly challenging geological region to work with. Engineers would need to account for these variables as they design and excavate the tunnel. The presence of active fault lines could pose significant risks to the integrity of the tunnel. Earthquakes, especially in the Pacific Ring of Fire region, are a constant threat. For this project to succeed, construction methods must be adaptable, resilient, and able to withstand natural disasters. Also, because the tunnel would likely be constructed using modern boring machines, there would be concerns about the potential for tunnel collapse or damage during the excavation process. This isn't just an engineering problem. It's a matter of worker safety and minimizing the risk to surrounding communities. Given the scale of the tunnel, the potential for accidents, and the sheer complexity of the design, construction could take years to complete. Any delays or safety incidents would only raise the cost and extend the project's timeline. So, who's the elephant in the room? The cost. However, the real elephant in the room is the cost of this endeavor. Estimates for such mega-projects often end up much higher than initially anticipated, and with costs running into the billions of dollars, is it truly worth it? To put it into perspective, the cost of this project could range from $20 billion to $30 billion, potentially more. This includes everything from engineering and design to labor, materials, and the technology required to ensure the tunnel's structural integrity. Remember, this isn't just about building a tunnel. This project would require building the associated high-speed rail system, stations, and transportation infrastructure. The total cost could be astronomical when you factor in the need for maintenance and ongoing operations after construction. It's not just about the financial cost, it's also about the political willpower and diplomatic negotiations required to make this project a reality. We've discussed the potential for geopolitical tensions, but could these tensions turn into real obstacles that hinder progress? But still, there is a sign of hope. Both Japan and South Korea would have to work closely to coordinate policies, regulations, and joint efforts in constructing and operating the tunnel. These two nations have complex relationships, historically, politically, and economically, and achieving a smooth partnership could take years of careful diplomatic negotiations. Still, despite these hurdles, the potential rewards are hard to ignore. This tunnel could stand as a symbol of cooperation between Japan and South Korea, a beacon of technological achievement, and a major force in shaping the future of regional transportation. So, what do you think? Would you love to see a high-speed train linking these two mega cities? Or is this just an impossible dream? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more mind-blowing content.